In December 2022, OpenAI launched ChatGPT, a chatbot based on a language model trained on a huge amount of data. In the first five days, one million users registered there. It was a record. Communication with ChatGPT gave the impression of meeting with artificial intelligence from science fiction films and books. It keeps up the conversation, understands requests, contexts, generates text almost indistinguishable from humans, even recognizes irony. Upon request, he can write a letter, come up with essay topics, titles, scripts, poems, and even help write code. In a world where mind-boggling technologies have become commonplace, it was the chatbot that speaks like a person and seems to know everything, bringing the feeling that the future has come. Or the future is moment away to come. An incredible hype has swelled around artificial intelligence. Large companies have joined the race to develop AI services. Investments have reappeared in the startup environment, which was paused because of crisis. Shares of the largest tech companies have become dependent on how much they are involved in the development of their own AI. A surge of forecasts and speculation about how the world will change now has swept the information field from technical media to large analytical agencies. Goldman Sachs has suggested that in the coming years AI will replace people in hundreds of millions of jobs. The best minds of our time sounded the alarm that AI is developing so fast that changes can become uncontrollable and even dangerous. The talking chatbot began to change the world right before our eyes. More precisely, not the chatbot itself, but the expectations of what this chatbot and similar services will be capable of in the future. So far, AI cannot code better than humans, but soon it will. So far, AI can't fact check, but soon it will. So far, AI can't draw better than humans, it will soon. So far, AI cannot replace all managers, HRs, copywriters, administrators, support specialists, but it will soon be able to. He can do everything if he develops the same pace as now. The idea that AI will soon take a key place in the foundation of economy, the internet and the social environment of the future, heating up the investment and research. Tens of billions of dollars are already pouring into the AI industry. Generative models are so good and evolving so fast that it really looks like the start of the new era. But what if the expectations are not met? What if generative models never learn to do jobs better than humans? What if the place and role of AI in our lives turns out to be much less significant? In fact, this has happened many times before. Success inflated the hype, expectations from AI skyrocketed. Then we were not justified as quickly as everyone wanted and AI winter came. The term AI winter appeared in the 80s. This was the name of a period when, because of disappointments, investments were stopped and research programs were frozen, and the sphere went into stagnation for many years. Until the next breakthrough again overestimated expectations to the skies. Here are some of the AI winters. When World War II ended, researchers had accumulated a wealth of experience in deciphering secret messages. To decipher, mathematicians paid attention to frequencies of letters, letter combinations, intervals between letters and letter combinations, letter patterns, and etc. They drew general principles that were fundamentally independent from the language and method of encryption. This led to the idea that since all the languages of the world were formed in similar conditions by the humans, who are in many ways similar with the same structure of vocal apparatus and brain, then languages must have common logical structures in their foundation. And that means they can be detected and systematized. This is how the idea of machine translation was born. The mathematician and one of the pioneers in this field, Warren Weaver, tried to infect his colleagues with this idea. In 1948, he wrote to his colleague, 
When I look at an article in Russian, I say, this is really written in English, but it has been coded in some strange symbols. I will now proceed to decode. In other words, if a computer can decode ciphers, then it can also decode one language into another. The research community picked up on the idea. Five years later, IBM released the first machine that could translate from Russian into English. Here's what the press wrote about it. Electronic brain translates Russian. An electronic language translator may have the power to revolutionize intercultural communication. The electronic brain is just in experimental stages regarding language translations. However, during its trial run, IBM 701 translated Russian sentences at the rate of one full sentence every six or seven seconds. Impact on civilization would be tremendous if in time the machine could translate basic references and scientific literature in existence in Western languages. But in reality, the machine's vocabulary was limited to 250 words. According to linguists, a person needs from 8 to 9,000 words to freely understand most texts. Another problem turned out to be even more serious. Words changed their meaning depending on the context. The most famous example that the machine produced was the sentence The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Translated back and forth with Russian, it became the vodka is good, but the meat is rotten. Ten years of work and research have not led to serious progress. In 1964, the Automatic Language Processing Advisory Committee was formed, and two years later it concluded. Machine translation was more expensive, less accurate and slower than human translation. Research funding has stopped. Active work on machine translation has stopped. In subsequent years, the approaches to machine translation have changed a lot. The path to statistical analysis, neural network translations and language models took decades. There is one old joke. Instructions on how to draw an owl. We draw an oval. When? We draw an owl. The ups and downs in the history of AI are very similar to this joke. Every time someone came up with a new idea and took the first step, drawing a novel. It seems to the world that at the second step, which would be very simple, an ideal result would appear. The first computers and the first promises of a thinking machine appeared almost simultaneously. Alan Turing, one of the pioneers of computer science back in 1947, said what we want is a machine that can learn from experience and the possibility of letting the machine alter its own instructions provides the mechanism for this. A year later, in 1948, he introduced many of the central concepts of AI in a report entitled Intelligent Machinery. Bold predictions and bright promises inspired both scientists and the audience, drawing attentions to AI developments and investments in research. Because the idea of AI is what unites scientists and ordinary people. Absolutely everyone knows what a working AI should look like in the end. As a human, and we all know human very well, if scientists promise to create a machine that will be like a person, cool, we are waiting, let's go. But even when scientists turn out to be right in their promises and predictions, the audience is unhappy with the price to achieve them. For example, the boom of neural networks came in the 2010s. It seemed to many people that they had become ever-present, because this is a new breakthrough invention, which many lacked before. In fact, the fundamental principles of neural network algorithms were formed in the 50s of the 20th century. In 1958, psychologist and neuroscientist Frank Rosenblatt created the Perceptron, a learning algorithm. It was the simplest neural network where only one layer of neurons connected inputs and outputs. According to his prediction, the algorithm in the future may be able to learn, make decisions and translate languages. The New York Times sensationally reported the Perceptron to be the embryo of an electronic computer that the Navy expects will be able to walk, 
talk, see, write, reproduce itself and be conscious of its existence. Expectations for the arrival of real AI skyrocketed. It seems that the algorithm could literally reproduce the work of the human brain. It was inspiring. More and more scientists joined the research. And they could do it, thanks to new investments. But in 1968, Marvin Minsky and Seymour Papert published the book Perceptrons. They talked about the limitations of the algorithm. As tasks become more complex, the volumes of a neural network must grow exponentially, which will ultimately require unattainable computing power. Another difficulty is Moravec's paradox, which states that it is comparatively easy to make computers exhibit adult-level performance on intelligence tests, playing checkers or calculating P to a billion digits but difficult or impossible to give the skills of a one-year-old when it comes to perception and mobility. The mental abilities of a child that we take for granted, recognizing a face, lifting a pencil or walking across a room, in fact, solve some of the hardest engineering problems ever conceived. Encoded in the large, highly evolved sensory and motor portions of a human brain is a billion years of experience about the nature of the world and how to survive in it. In other words, it's easy for AI to solve hard problems, but really hard to solve easy ones. Five years later, in 1974, Professor James Lighthill made a famous report. He criticized the utter failure of AI to achieve its grandiose objectives. He mentioned the problem of combinatorial explosion, which implied that many of AI's most successful algorithms would grind to a halt in real-world problems and were only suitable for solving toy versions. Gradually, AI research faded away and then was frozen for a decade. This period has been called the first AI winter. In the following years, the AI industry experienced several more ups and downs. DARPA and other military departments invested huge amounts of money in the development of autonomous weapons and then cut off the investment because nothing worked. In the mid-80s, a whole industry of so-called expert machines or LISP machines based on AI technologies emerged. By the end of the 80s, the companies developing them were worth billions of dollars in total. All of them collapsed in just a year, when desktop computers from IBM and Apple entered the market and turned out to be cheaper, more productive and easier to use. The collapse of entire industry again blocked investment in AI for years to come. Now, in 2023, we are in the midst of the hottest AI summer ever. Most of the problems that started AI winters in the past have been solved. Modern computing power allows the operation of gigantic and complex neural networks. Interaction with AI has become more accessible than ever. Anyone on the internet can generate text, audio, video and images using AI. We have really great analytical predictive systems, image recognition and much more. The problem is that the expectations of AI are getting higher and higher. Now the world is waiting for AI services to start massively replacing people in all jobs. But what if the billions of dollars invested do not pay off? What if customers don't like how AI is serving them? What if employers are dissatisfied with the first attempts to replace employees with AI? What if there are tough regulations and laws in the use of AI? What if the idea of AI assistance instead of full-fledged replacements for humans turns out to be not so exciting? Disappointment can come one step away from the next breakthrough. But what exactly the lesson of the past AI winters teaches us is that everything that people expect from AI is coming true. It just takes a lot longer sometimes. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked this video. So hit the like button, show this video to your friends or share it somewhere on social media and check the website of Anywhere Club, AW.club. It's a digital platform for a global community of IT professionals and you can find a lot of useful things there. 
So thank you for watching. See you soon.